Welcome to Carbonite's webinar series on maintaining HIPAA compliance and how Carbonite can help. My name is Danielle Shear, and I'm Vice President and General Counsel of Carbonite. The information I provide is accurate as of June 2014. Today we're going to review HIPAA, what it is and why you should care, data backup requirements pursuant to the HIPAA regulations, and a specific application of the Carbonite solution. After reviewing the webinar, you should walk away with an understanding of what HIPAA is, what your compliance requirements are, and how a solution like Carbonite can help you remain in HIPAA compliance. So, let's get started. HIPAA is an acronym. It stands for the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. It was passed by Congress in 1996, and it was generally designed to do one thing, which was to provide the ability to transfer and continue health insurance for American workers who were in between jobs or had been laid off. Essentially, it, it, it was COBRA. Um, it did a couple of other things as well, really good things. It reduced healthcare, it was intended to reduce healthcare fraud and abuse, to mandate industry-wide standards for healthcare electronic billing, and what we'll be discussing today, it requires the protection and confidential handling of protected health information. Okay, so a couple def definitions. Protected health information. That's a defined term under the HIPAA Act, and it means information relating to the physical or mental health or condition of an individual, the provision of healthcare services, or the payment for the provision of healthcare services to an individual. All of those three things are considered protected health information. Confidential handling of protected health information also means something specific under the HIPAA regulations. It means that companies have taken appropriate administrative, technical, and physical safeguard implementation steps. Um, and we're going to review exactly what that means because there's a lot more detail under that as well. So you may be thinking to yourself, well, Carbonite um, isn't a hospital and it isn't a health insurance company. Um, why is Carbonite talking about HIPAA? <clears throat> well, the reason Carbonite is talking about HIPAA is because the definition of business associate recently changed under the HIPAA regulations. A business associate um, used to be uh, vendors who had access to protected health information on behalf of covered entities. HIPAA applies to covered entities, right? Anybody in the health in, health industry. Um, and companies like Carbonite don't have, quote, access to protected health information. Carbonite doesn't have access because all the data that customers send us is encrypted, and customers can choose to manage their own private encryption key, which means that Carbonite doesn't have any access, technical or otherwise, even if it wanted to, which we don't. Um, but the definition changed a year ago, a little over a year ago. And instead of the trigger for business associates being access to protected health information, now it's vendors who create, receive, maintain, or transmit protected health information. And as if Congress was speaking um, directly to backup companies, um, they said, you guys are in scope. So if you're going to take protected health information off-site from a doctor's office, you're going to need to also be compliant with the administrative, physical, and technical safeguards that we're imposing because we think that these are the highest standards that are required for people's protected health information to remain confidential. So we performed a thorough um, analysis and audit documenting all the ways in which we meet each of the specific administrative, physical, and technical safeguards. And we're going to take you through that um, specifically a little bit later on in this presentation. But let me first explain what we mean by administrative, physical, and technical technical safeguards. So HIPAA actually has a, uh, a, a schedule of administrative, physical, and technical safeguards. I'm going to give you some examples of each. And um, they're very easy to read. And um, they are subject to interpretation, although now that a lot of companies are starting to document their compliance with each safeguard, there is a best practices emerging. So for example, here are two types of administrative safeguards and there are tons of administrative physical and technical so these are just little snippets so first um, safeguard is a company uh, whether it's a covered entity or a business associate needs to implement security measures sufficient to reduce risks and vulnerabilities to a reasonable and appropriate level to ensure the confidentiality integrity and availability of data 
And we'll talk a little bit later about how Carbonite meets that standard. Uh, another administrative example, implement procedures for monitoring login attempts and reporting discrepancies. Physical safeguards. Here are two examples. A company and a business associate has to implement procedures to control and validate a person's access to facilities based on their role or function, including visitor control and control of access to software programs for testing and revision. Uh, in addition, a covered entity at and a business associate needs to implement policies and procedures to address the final disposition of electronic protected health information and the hardware electronic media that it's stored on. And finally, two examples of technical safeguards. Co covered entities and business associates need to implement a mechanism to encrypt and decrypt electronic protected health information and implement electronic procedures that terminate an electronic session after a predetermined time of inactivity. Now, Throughout all these safeguards, there are required um, safeguards that must be implemented, and then there are ones that are addressable. And uh, addressable, uh, you know, you should talk to your attorneys um, and your compliance uh, executives, but in my mind, addressable, addressable doesn't mean optional. In my mind, addressable means, addressable means if it is reasonable and appropriate to do so, it is a safeguard that you should implement. And that is how Carbonite has um, analyzed each of these safeguards to the extent that they are addressable or required. Okay, so we're going to dig into um, some truths and fictions. First, I don't back up my stuff. I don't currently back up my electronic patient records. Can you be considered HIPAA compliant? No. It is actually required that all covered entities um, establish and implement procedures to create and maintain retrievable exact copies of electronic protected health information. That's an easy one. How about this? I manually back up to an external hard drive or a CD or a local tape, and I take it home with me every night when I remember. Not good enough either for two reasons. One, um, it doesn't say that you've encrypted the information on your external hard drive or CD or local tape that you take home with you every night. And um, uh, electronic protected health information should be encrypted in order to meet security measures recommended under HIPAA. Now that's an addressable standard, but I would argue that it's reasonable and appropriate to have your stuff encrypted if you're gonna be carting it back and forth outside of the office. Um, two, um, it says that you required to st uh, the the regulations require that you store these backup copies of VPHI in a separate location from the original data. And um, you know I'm being a little nitpicky, but in this example, the uh, external hard drive only goes home to an offsite location when the person remembers, and so they're not always going to be compliant. Okay. I use another online backup vendor um, for my electronic protected health information storage, so insert name. Um, and it doesn't really matter who you put in here, you just have to do the work and make sure they're compliant. In the examples chosen here, um, they, we cannot, uh, their websites do not state that they support HIPAA compliance. So you need to be careful. Um, and you have to do more than just check the websites, make sure they're HIPAA compliant. If you're a covered entity or you're a business associate, you need a business associate agreement signed by a company. Okay, how about this? Oh, okay, so I don't use any of those other vendors, but I use Carbonite, and I have a Carbonite personal plan. So am I HIPAA compliant now? Well, unfortunately not. Although our personal plans are secure and encrypted, they're not intended for businesses that need to comply with federal HIPAA regulations. They're, they're actually not intended for businesses at all. Um, personal plan subscribers are not offered additional safeguards that's required of covered entities and business associates, and we will not sign a business associate agreement with a personal plan subscriber. So pro and server plans are HIPAA compliant. Okay, so, okay, I am a subscriber to Carbonite Pro or Carbonite Server. Um, yes, you win. Um, as we are a business associate for you. Uh, reach out to our sales team. They'll get you a business associate agreement. Um, you can file that away in your records. We file one away in our records. And you become, um, you get all the benefits of our administrative, physical, and technical safeguards to ensure the confidentiality, integrity, and security of your EPHI. So why should you care? Well, the healthcare industry is an intensely regulated industry, and of any other regulation um, that exists today, 
uh, in terms of data security, I think it probably goes the farthest in terms of compliance requirements at federal, state, and individual le uh, levels. And non-compliance can lead to steep financial penalties or even jail time. So, um, you know, Congress takes this very seriously, um, and uh, and covered entities take this very seriously. So, if you're a partner looking to partner with a covered entity, you need to make sure you understand um, what your company's HIPAA compliance requirements are, and you can and you can meet those with the right vendors. So. Um, I promised that I would do a little application of how Carbonite meets the administrative, physical, and technical safeguards that we had discussed earlier and I'd given you an overview of. So here, we'll go through the ones that I reviewed. So you'll remember one of the administrative safeguards is to implement security measures sufficient to reduce risks and vulnerabilities to a reasonable and appropriate level to ensure the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of data. So Carbonite reviewed this. We also reviewed how a lot of other companies are responding to the safeguard, and here's what we came up with. We meet this standard because we conduct routine network penetration testing. Um, we maintain a secure firewall. We utilize proprietary intrusion detection solutions. We're constantly monitoring for suspicious activity on our networks. We follow a formal incident response process so that we can recognize, analyze, and remediate any information security threats and we run a vulnerability management program. Additionally, and this is just um, a side benefit because uh, Carbonate is headquartered in Massachusetts, but we're subject to the Massachusetts Data Security Regulation, um, which uh, what became effective in 2010. And uh, the data security regulation is considered the most stringent data security regulation passed by a state to date and it affects um, all residents of Massachusetts. And because we don't segregate our customers between Massachusetts residents and everybody else, everybody gets the benefit of this added protection of, this, of our compliance with the Massachusetts Data Security Regulation. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, it means that we have to have a written information security program which includes a lot of policies. It includes, uh, you might be familiar with the acronym WISP, it includes a written information security policy, a corporate network security policy, a corporate personal information policy, and all of these policies work together to ensure the integrity of Carbonate's network and all customer data that's protected by it. So another administrative safeguard. We, as a business associate, have to implement procedures for monitoring login attempts and reporting discrepancies. So how do we do this? Well, our pro and server plan administrators are able to query user logins. You're actually able to go back and check and see who's logged in and when. And we lock out customers who've entered an incorrect password five times, in addition to providing the customer with email notification of attempted access. Okay, so let's move on to physical safeguards. I'm gonna give you two examples. First, a business associate in a covered entity needs to implement procedures to control and validate a person's access to facilities based on their role or function, including visitor control and control of access to software programs for testing and revision. You know, th this may sound like an easy one, but do you know where your data is being backed up? Do you know the geographic region? Do you know the actual physical structure where it is or what their security policies are or who's watching, you know, what, what who's watching the data, who has um, ability to exit and enter that facility. Um, with Carbonite, you just have to ask. We have white papers that detail all this information. We restrict access to all Carbonite data center facilities to authorize Carbonite personnel only. There's actually only very few people who have access to our Carbonite data centers. We have several state-of-the-art security controls including biometric identification as a requirement for access. In some of our data centers, I, there's this feature called the man trap, which I think is really interesting. Um, it means that you get weighed on the way in, and if you weigh more coming out, the door actually won't open for you. And that is intended to be an additional level of protection so that nothing is removed from data centers. We restrict access to Carbonite software programs for testing and revision to authorized Carbonite personnel only. And we have a very strict visitor access policy, stating that data center managers have to approve and then accompany any visitors in advance for the specific internal areas that they wish to visit. Finally, our headquarters are managed by a security company that provides on-site 24-hour security, and you need additional key card access to uh, access Carbonite's offices. Okay. 
The second physical safeguard I'll review is implementation of policies and procedures to address the final disposition of electronic protected health information and the hardware or electronic media in which it is stored. So why do you care about this? Well, let's say that you're currently with a backup vendor and you realize, hey, I don't have a business associate agreement and you quickly dialed uh, the sales team and they said, yeah, we can't provide you a business associate agreement. You know you need to switch to a solution that is that does support your HIPAA compliance, so you call up Carbonite. No problem, right? It's no problem to switch over to Carbonite, but what happens to all your electronic protected health information that you're storing at the prior company? Do you know how they're gonna dispose of it? Are you certain that it's gonna be disposed of in a way that it'll never you know, be able to be retrieved again? Well, that's a good question, and you should ask any company that you decide to entrust your data with. In Carbonite's um, world, we have a data destruction process, and upon a customer's instruction or subscription termination, that data destruction process goes into action. It requires that all hardware subject to destruction is authorized for destruction, and that it is logically wiped, and that's an industry term, by authorized individuals. And logical wiping means that it consists of a full write of the drive with all zeros, followed by a full read of the drive to ensure that the drive is blank, the erase results are then logged by the drive serial number for future tracking and record keeping. Okay, technical safeguards. So we'll review two. One, implement a mechanism to encrypt and decrypt electronic protected health information. Now this is the one I was telling you is addressable, not required. And addressable meaning if it is reasonable and appropriate to do so. And of course, most cloud backup providers will tell you it is reasonable and appropriate to encrypt electronic health information or customer data in general. So how does Carbonate meet the standard? Well, depending on the service you use, we encrypt files with a minimum of 128-bit Blowfish encryption while still in the customer's computer. And we have several different encryption options depending on the solution you choose. We transmit files to one of Carbonate's several state-of-the-art data centers using SSL technology and we keep files encrypted on our servers. Decryption is performed only upon authorized requests, and if you are in, uh, uber security conscious, you can choose to manage your own private encryption key. So Carbonite keeps these keys encrypted for your benefit, uh, for customer's benefit and partner's benefit for convenience, but you can choose to keep it yourself. Um, in which case Carbonite has absolutely no access to decrypt data on your authorized request. And the last technical safeguard we'll review is implementation of electronic procedures that terminate an electronic session after a predetermined time of inactivity. So you might think this one is a simple one, but if your vendor that backs up your information doesn't have um, an automatic termination of your electronic session, after you've been called away uh, or something has interrupted your attention, you're leaving your computer and all the data um, on it vulnerable to um, any anything. Um, so Carbonite meets the standard because we automatically log you out of your account after 30 minutes of inactivity. And it's just a nice additional security feature that you should look for in a solution that's, uh, that's robust and takes the confidentiality of your data seriously. So uh, just to summarize, Carbonite provides critical data protection. Um, and we can protect an unlimited amount of computers, external hard drives, NAS devices, and Windows servers. We do not charge you per device. Um, we encrypt backed up data so that patients and business information is secure. We store all of this data in highly secure data centers, and we provide easy access to authorized personnel um, to restore data in the event that data is lost. I hope you enjoyed this webinar. If you have any f uh, additional questions, you should feel free to email us at any time at security at carbonite.com. Thanks so much.